All right, welcome everybody to Moto America's version, Mission King of the Baggers here at MotoGP Grand Prix of the Americas. And this weekend we have a special treat, which is Mission King of the Baggers class racing right next to MotoGP. We're pretty excited about it. And on stage in the middle is your reigning national champion, number one plate. That's Hayden Gillum. Hi. <laughs> yeah, woohoo. And Hayden, of course, races for the Revzilla, Motul, Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson team on the road glide, which is right in front of, to his right, your left. And then starting from the outside is James Raspoli, Harley Davidson factory screaming eagle rider, new to the team this year. No stranger to winning races. Next to him is teammate Kyle Wyman. Kyle, of course, the winningest Mission King of the Bagger racer of all time and national champion as well. And then we have Tyler O'Hara, another national champion, Indian Motorcycles. That's the SNS bike, multiple time winner. And then at the end over there, we have rookie to the class, we could say, Troy Herfoss, three time national champ for Superbikes in Australia. Welcome gentlemen, good to have you all here. Aiden, let's start with you. Quick question, the obvious question, how excited are you to be here at Circuit of the Americas racing these motorcycles alongside MotoGP? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm ready to put on a really good show for everybody and show, show the world what these things can do around this racetrack. I'm especially excited about coming here whenever it's not 105 degrees. So it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun weekend. I think we're going to be able to have some really good races if, if Dana, Daytona shows anything. it's. It's gonna be a dogfight. Well, speaking of Daytona, this track is only, I don't know, about a tenth of a mile shorter than that track, but significantly different. Yeah. So talk about racing these machines around here. For those that are new to Mission King of the Baggers, just to give you a little bit of an idea in terms of the weight of the bikes, the minimum weight for this class is 620 pounds or 281 kilograms. A MotoGP bike is 350 pounds minimum weight, or 160 kilograms. Moto America Superbike's just a little bit more than that at 370 and a half pounds. So what do you think, you know, we, we, were, we were here not too long ago, you know, about a half a year ago. So what do you think about different conditions? It's obviously gonna be cooler. We're expecting faster lap times. But describe to us riding this motorcycle at Circuit of the Americas. Uh, I don't know, it's, they're, it's hard to explain. They actually work a lot better than people think they do. You know, they, they look at them and they think that they're just pigs and they don't go around the track very good, but they, they work so good. These guys, every team that's out here has uh, put in so much work on these bikes to make them go fast. And every time we go to the track, it's faster and faster and faster and faster. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're definitely, definitely off of MotoGP pace, but we aren't far off of our our sewer bike guys whenever we come here on these and it's uh this is definitely a technical track um 620 pounds is a lot of weight to throw around but you know we're all we're all here to do a job and this is our job to ride these things and throw these bikes around and we're all pretty pretty dang good at it all right tyler o'hara next question for you all right 2022 champ um let's talk about those lap times we were at a conversation earlier what are you expecting in terms of times here? Because you know everybody's going to say, oh, let's compare you guys to MotoGP bikes. But what are you expecting in terms of lap times around Circuit of the Americas? Well, I believe we'll be faster than we were last year in September. And last year we were right around 215. I think we'll be around 214.15. This is kind of where I'm predicting. It's kind of what we're fixing to do. But we'll see what the track gives us. So probably about five seconds off Superbike. And and uh, maybe seven seconds off of Superbike and probably 15 seconds off of uh, MotoGP. It's kind of, maybe, we'll see. Now, the first exhibition race was at the end of 2020. And here we are four short years later, three years later. Did you envision that we could get to this kind of magnitude with this class in such a short period of time? You know, Laguna Seca, we, we put on a show and it was, nobody really knew what to expect and me and Hayden had a great race and we've been at every race since and the wave just keeps getting bigger and 
to be here racing with MotoGP, the pinnacle of motorcycle racing uh, at an American track, racing uh, American motorcycles. It's just uh, so American. I'm just super proud and uh, honored to be here. Yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity and we're going to have some fun and we're going to hopefully put on a show and open up the eyes to a brand new audience of people all over the world. Kyle Wyman, currently leading this championship. We've had two races in our opener. And we have 18 races on the schedule for this season. I want to remind everybody that the exhibition race was at the end of 2020. In 2021, we had three races. Kyle was our national champ. Then in 2022, we went to seven races. And last year, we had 14. Now we're up to 18. So tell me a little bit about how excited you are to be here this weekend. Yeah, it's a... Uh amazing opportunity for the whole series for moto america for you know harley davidson both the manufacturers to be here in front of this audience and i think uh you know if if anybody's caught a glimpse of what we've been up to over here the last few years they they've seen that it's produced some incredible racing and it's a it's a really great tie to you know the product that we sell here in america so i think it's just such a good fit and uh you know for us to be here is I think it's been a goal for a couple years for a lot of us. It's been talked about quite a bit, but to make it happen and for also to see MotoGP and Dorna embrace us so well and, and help promote that we're going to be here is a huge deal. And I think that speaks to what we've done and the, the importance of it in motorcycling. So, you know, I'm just really appreciative for, for that vision they have to kind of bring this into the fold and help us with the, you know, the exposure and the coverage of it. So. Um, yeah, from here, it's, I think, you know, there's a lot of really amazing things that could come out of this weekend. So, you know, but now we're here, we can finally go to work, go racing, have some fun. How personal is this for you? Harley Davidson dealership and the family, but in terms of this Mission King of the Baggers program, you've been in with Harley Davidson since day one. A lot of the development of the motorcycle is coming out of your right wrist and your butt. So how personal is this for you? I mean, it's very personal. Yeah, like you said, my family, you know, Harley Davidson dealership since 1962. And, uh, you know, grew up racing flat track, went into road racing. When I went road racing, obviously I raced all brands but Harleys, uh, except for that XR 1200 series that we had for those few years. But, you know, racing BMWs and Ducatis and, and Yamahas and thinking that well, my, my Harley Davidson days of racing were over. Um, but, you know, here comes this, this King of the Baggers championship, really just, brought me right back into the fold and gave me the opportunity to be a part of it from day one as their first rider in the factory team. And it's grown so much from such a small program, like literally three, four of us kind of in the corner at Harley, just, you know, hoping we can do something cool to, to now what it's become. And um, yeah, it's very personal, very personal for sure. All right, over to Troy. Well, I mean, what can we say? You stormed onto the scene in Daytona unbelievable finishes close obviously great battles what's it like racing mission king of the baggers it's an experience i can tell you it's, it was a real baptism of fire racing with these guys at daytona it was everything from terrifying to exciting um something i'll never forget to be honest i'm really really fortunate for the for the opportunity that indian had given me to come here and do this i did not expect to be sitting here at MotoGP in coda um, this year, uh, but yeah, coming out of Daytona, it's nothing but excitement. I just uh, I had so much fun down there. Um, I've just been thinking about it day in, day out. I just wish I could have my own bike at home so I could spin some laps on it. I'm just curious because of obviously your experience with super bikes. What are what's the characteristic of the Indian Challenger in this form of race bike that is that stands out as such a difference to you? Okay, so the, the reality is that they, they're just another road bike. For us to ride, um, we set them up the same, the same characteristics as a super bike. It's just longer, taller, heavier, um, different sort of power. For me, the main thing is it's just so raw. The bike has so much power in your right hand, um, so much torque. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really a physical challenge. Um, it's a rider's challenge. There's a lot of finesse involved. Uh, it's just, it's a lot different. We've, over the last 10 years, I've been coming from that style of superbike. I've 
I didn't race carbureted superbikes when I'm that, that old, but I started with bikes that had potentially full power, worked my way through to bikes with a lot of electronics, and now I'm, and now I'm here on this bike, and it sort of feels like where it all began with all that power in my right hand, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble, but it's a lot of fun. Well, you're gonna need it, this long back straightaway here at Circuit of the Americas. All right, to James Raspoli, who last year was on a privateer team, the team that won the national championship, and now full-blown factory Harley-Davidson. So, Raspoli, you had your go full factory team at Daytona. How are you feeling now about the move, about the bike, and about this weekend? Yeah, first off, I'm super grateful to get the, the factory seat and to be able to get promoted up. Um, it's a dream of mine, so just taking it all in from there. Daytona was really good for us. I mean, we came away with two podiums. Uh, two third places, sitting third in the championship. But as you alluded to, you know, 18 races in this season is the longest we've been. It's a really long season for us and for everybody to make sure that we finish every single race is pretty crucial. So um, I'm feeling really good. I'm very excited. If anybody watched the races last year, they were quite exciting. Uh, the racing is so raw in this class still that I think it's uh, it creates a lot of close racing and a lot of great racing. So. Man, I'm just, I'm excited to be here, excited to be along MotoGP, and I think, uh, yeah, it's just, it's really, really cool, and I'm excited to get to FP1. You had a couple of um, <laughs> big spins, big slides at Daytona. Some of the things that you've learned from there that you're going to take Dakota? Yeah, I mean, just settle down a little bit. I think, uh, you know, new season, new bike, new team, you get a little aggressive, and, uh, you know, I'm a little bit more of the wild one out there, I think, and uh, I ride a little bit more seat of the pants, but maybe settle down a little bit, but it's good for the cameras, it's good for everything, and as long as we can kind of uh, harness that energy, um, it should be good here. And I'm uh, just excited to get to two weekends, and or two races this weekend, and you know, it's something a little different, you know, riding uh, race one and race two in the same day, we don't normally do that, so it'll be a quick turnaround there, and it's a little shortened schedule for us, like everything's packed in, so. We've got to be on our A game and come away with some good points. All right. These are your five right here. I'm going to open up the floor for questions. Anyone have questions for any one of these riders? Hi, uh, it's Jonathan Hawkins here from CNN. A um, couple of questions, actually. Firstly, um, what do you think this series can teach MotoGP in terms of fan experience and, and uh, all of that kind of thing? Well, now you're side by side here at Kota. Um. I think that um, it's a little bit tricky because, you know, MotoGP is not a production-based race series, right? So, you know, all those classes are on prototype chassis, prototype engines for the most part. And, um, you know, this is obviously, th these motorcycles started as road-going bikes and, and get heavily modified the same way a superbike does. I think um, it's a little bit of a different flavor of racing, but I think that you know the lesson in it is that you know if you can engage the wider public of motorcyclists, you can really get something going. And I think uh, you know racing fans are you know motorcycle racing fans are, are still a small segment of motorcyclists. I think what King of the Baggers has done is is taking a greater chunk of motorcyclists and interest them in in racing that maybe never even watched racing of any kind in the past. So. I don't know what you do with that information, but you know I think that that is the lesson or or the the difference at this point. And the, the, the second question I had was, um, what are you most excited about seeing close up in terms of MotoGP, and who are you most excited um, to anyone who wants to answer? I'm a massive Marquez fan, <laughs> so <laughs> I'd love to see him return return to his best, and I think this is a good opportunity to do it. So, yeah, for me, I'm fortunate to be here to see that live. That'll be exciting. I'm excited to see the Trackhouse team, American team coming in, MotoGP, and, and uh, Joe Roberts as well, um, being able to support the Americans here at our home turf. I think it's going to be fun. He's going to have a lot of support, hopefully some, from some Bagger fans coming that might, might not know him. And um, Yeah, so that's, I'm looking forward to cheering on the Americans for sure. Uh, I got to race with Brad Bender in Rookies Cup, so I've got a little bit of support going his way, and, and I'm a big Miller fan, so it's uh, I'm you know kind of focused on that group there. But it's it's always cool to be a part of the 
you know, a part of it. We've got to, a few of us have got to be here for a few different races. So uh, being on a bagger this time around is something cool. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see how the fans, you know, take us and, and look at these bikes. Uh, I know a lot of people, it's 50-50. You got a lot of people that like them and a lot of people that hate them. So uh, I'm excited to just have a good weekend. You know, the weather's going to be beautiful. And I think, uh, just I'm I'm ready to put on a show and 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 get to see the show that is MotoGP too. Yeah, for me it's uh, it's track house as well. You know, it's just a really exciting you know adventure for these guys to jump in, even before they originally planned to. You know, for them to to have the audacity to you know take that on and and uh, and with all the things they're doing. Fortunately, I've been able to go to a few NASCAR races this year, so I've become a lot more of a NASCAR fan. So to see a little bit of track house and what they do on a, on a larger scale. Um, yeah, for them to have a home round for the first time, I think is a big deal. So that's, that's what I'm excited about. Yeah, just kind of, it's not much, but uh, just to see the entire show on Sunday, right? We race Saturday to see that show and to really see like all the bagger fans and MotoGP fans all kind of come together and kind of see how that gels and really to see two really cool projects like come together at the highest level I think it's going to be super cool and super unique. Hello guys, Mirko Colombi, Italy. Um, about uh, one of you, a volunteer who wants to reply to the question because I know it's not easy to reply, but in general is uh, more easy you know, ride this kind of bike or more difficult comparing a world, oh, sorry, a super bike in general, a super bike Moto America or Australian Championship. So it's easier or more difficult? Because uh, we saw, we, we see you sliding, you know, sideways. Uh, it's very fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely a, a lot of fun. Um, more difficult. I, I don't know if it's more difficult or easier. It's just kind of similar. I think that, you know, most of us have have a lot of superbike backgrounds. So the development of the bikes has really been influenced by our background in superbike racing. So my goal from day one is to be able to turn the road glide into a superbike. So the style is kind of there, but you know we're we're talking a ridiculous amount of torque and no rider aids are allowed. So, you know, like Troy was alluding to, it's, it's really kind of a, a throwback to, you know, all of our backgrounds in flat track racing and, uh, and super bike racing. Um, they're, they're only hard to, to, to stop if you get in too deep. A little bit more difficult to get them slowed down if you, <laughs> yes, just, just like these, right? That's what you need. Yeah, so, no, it's, but, Fun, I'd say the fun factor is a little bit higher. Thank you. James, can you describe the difference between the experience that you had last year on the Vance and Hines bike and now with the factory squad? Yeah, so I mean, last year I rode for Vance and Hines. They're, you know, no team, they, they know how to build speed and how to build a great program. Um, you know, Terry Vance back in the day had one of the most successful programs you could have in AMA. So they know what they're doing. Moving to the factory team, you know, you've got a little bit more flair, I would say. You know, everything's new and pristine and having that and then having the ability to be the development house for the class, per se, um, and then to kind of follow in suit with Kyle of what he's developed and to kind of take a little bit of my style and be able to you know, put into the motorcycle. But the differences in bikes are not too crazy. Like they both do their different powertrains, which are different and they feel different. Um, you know, Vance and Hines has produced their own swing arm. So there's little differences between the bikes, but um, it's not a crazy amount. I think it's more just team-based and how the morale is and how uh, we're able to achieve the same goal. So um, yeah, I think both teams are really good um, and yeah, it's uh, both bikes have, I would say, better and weaker spots. You know, like uh, I think um, it's a it's an interesting question. So, 
Alan Lane, Sport Bike Sync Magazine. How you doing, fellas? Uh, quick question. The appeal of the class has just really bloomed, blossomed over the last couple of seasons to a, on a global scale. What do you attribute it to? For everybody. I'd, I'd say just because it's so different. Like nobody's, you know, Racing's racing. We race whatever we can get our hands on, and uh, but even you know this is a stretch for for the racing scene. Like most people wouldn't look at these bikes and be like, "Hey, I'm going to take that to the track." So uh, what Moto America and Harley and Indian have done is bring something completely off the spectrum to the track and I think that's I think that's the big thing and then you know there's so many people that ride these bikes out on the road you know they can really you know a sewer bike isn't that much different from a street bike that you buy off the showroom floor these are a little different and I think it's it's cool for people you know these are like the dream bikes whenever you buy a whenever you buy a bagger these this is like this is the imagination working this is all the effort and all the work that these guys have put in and turn these bikes into race bikes. I think it's just, it's so, like, it's just so out there. I think that's the big thing is it's so different. You know, people have seen sewer bikes for a long time. People have seen even MotoGP for a long time. This is something completely new. Yeah. I think to second that, I mean, I think it's crazy. I think you got the eyeballs of everyone just because it's wild and wow, you shouldn't be able to do that. And then you got the credibility that kicks in, the lap times we're able to do, uh, the development from the two manufacturers to build these bikes and continue to go faster every single time or in every single track we get to is uh, something crazy in itself. So I think that the credibility helps pour more gasoline on the wow factor of, hey, you shouldn't be able to do this. You know, Kyle Dragon elbow at New Jersey last year. Just like you shouldn't be able to do that stuff. You should be only seeing a MotoGP, and here we go. It's kind of trickling down on to a Harley Davidson Road Glide. So I think that allows it to bubble itself out and continue with the credibility that, hey, they're just not uh, a sideshow. Hey, we're racing like real motorcycles here and at its rawest form. I think it's very relatable. Uh, customers are riding the same bike that we're riding, essentially, with some mods. And you know, every year we're going faster. This year we went 186 miles an hour at Daytona. I don't, I don't think, I think that's still impressive. Um, and every year we keep going faster. And the sky's the limit. And the development with these things and. Indian Motorcycle, the Indian Challenger is just the ultimate performance bagger and people can relate. They're riding their bikes to the track, they're having fun. What wins on Sunday sells on Monday and um, it's like you said, it's wild, it's entertaining, it's really raw. We really got to ride them. Um, without the rider aids, it really, you get to see the bikes moving around more and, and it's just kind of a throwback a little bit so you get a little bit more personalities and, and it's, uh, it's entertaining. Yeah, for me, for me coming in from the outside, um, you learn real quick. There's a there's a, a real healthy rivalry there between the two manufacturers, um, but it's it's real. Like there's a real rivalry, something that I've probably haven't experienced before, and I think that that creates excitement. Yeah, like Tyler said, you people can relate to us riding these bikes. There's um, and like Kyle said, there's there's. There's a lot of people out there that, that love motorbikes and, and probably more people riding these style of bikes than any other bike really, uh, especially in this country. So I think it's, it's just, it's really relatable. There's a really healthy rivalry and, um, and it doesn't, these bikes are making us look good as riders because they, they do work better than you think, but the average person probably doesn't believe how good they can handle. So it does look a bit exciting to see a, a bagger go on the track like that, so. All right, before we let you guys go, um, quick word. The president of Moto America is here, Wayne Rainey. Good to see you here, Wayne. And uh, real quick question for you, obviously on the growth of this class. It's only been a couple of years, and now you're looking at it here in center stage with MotoGP, 18 races. What's your view on Mission King of the Baggers and, and uh, from a racing standpoint and also from the growth standpoint? Well, like you said, or some uh, things, one of you guys said, we, uh, when we brought this to Laguna Seca four years ago, 
you know, a lot of people ask, what are you guys doing now? And, uh, you know, we were looking for another demographic to help support ticket sales. So when we brought baggers to Laguna Seca and we saw that they actually put on a pretty good show, and then we saw the seriousness of the manufacturers and how they were, they not only did they want to win, they wanted to beat each other. And we were able to create another class that these guys could continue their careers on. Um, it's been a fantastic uh, journey so far. I think what the fans are going to see is when you watch these bikes going around the track, it's like something you've never seen. You're going to be able to tell the Harley from the Indian pretty easy because of the color of their bags going through the corners. And when they change directions, it's like it just keeps your eye focused on them. It's like, uh, like a sight you've never seen. Uh, they went over 180 miles an hour at Daytona. Uh, for, for Moto America, for us, the big challenge is, is keeping the brakes on these things. I mean, if, if we did everything that the manufacturers wanted, they'd be going another five seconds a lap faster, pretty easy. So, uh, you know, these guys are real athletes, they're real riders that just, they want to win. Um, I think when these th bikes come down the front straightaway, there's going to be a sound like you've never s heard before. So uh, I don't think this is the last time the MotoGP paddock will see these. Thank you, Wayne. All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up. we got two more questions. All right, let's get to two more questions. Uh, yeah, uh, Frankie Garcia, uh, for you guys who don't know who I am, a uh, big fan of all you guys. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of different reasons why you guys might have some added pressure uh, personally this weekend. I mean, obviously it's the first first weekend we're seeing uh, uh, baggers with with MotoGP. It's something that's been talked about for a really long time. Um, you know, Kyle, you just came off two wins at Daytona. James, uh, you're now on a factory bike. Um, you know, uh, Troy, you, they brought you all the way here from Australia. Um, and then, you know, Tyler is a former champion, and, and we have the current champion. Um, but does being racing on this international level bring a lot, of, lot more, like, personal um, kind of pressure this weekend? Yep. We all, uh, <laughs> it definitely I think we all want to win in, at, at this stage, right? I mean, you know, it's... It would mean nothing more to us than to to be the guy on Saturday, right? But uh, yeah, it's. I mean, for me, I kind of uh, you know put that pressure situation on every race, you know, because they all mean so much. And uh, you know, but we've got 18 races this year. We've only had two of of the 18, and this is just two more. So you know, if we're talking about getting a title, we need to think about the long term as well so um, but I think uh, no matter what we say up here when the you know when the lights go out on Saturday we're all going to be trying to kill each other so <laughs> I mean yeah all bets are off. Uh, pressure is a privilege to be here it's an honor and this is what we live for this is what we've been racing for to have opportunity to come out here I'm going to enjoy it have fun with it I mean this is uh this is what we've been racing for. I think all of us have been racing a long time. I think, you know, we, in some way we kind of deserve to be here and, and it's going to be fun and we're going to put on a good show. And yeah, pressure is a privilege and to put on a show in front of the, the show, it's going to be fun. Hey, you guys, I have a quick question. So we talk, we've talked a little bit about top speeds on these bikes and what you guys were achieving at Daytona, 185.5 miles per hour. I mean, that's pretty close to 200 at this point. So like Wayne said, maybe you'll get unleashed and get a little bit more out of that. But one of the things we haven't talked about is obviously these are touring bikes. They have saddlebags on them, real wide fairings. You have to get them up kind of high because the engine's pretty wide too. But we always see these videos of Mark Marquez, you know, he gets his knee down, his elbow down, his shoulder down, maybe his helmet, I don't know. But um, I know 60% lean angle is supposed to be, or 60 degree lean angle is supposed to be pretty impressive. Um, that's kind of a MotoGP level. Um, I'm gonna ask Kyle this and you guys can kind of debate it a little bit or, or give your input. Kyle, what, what kind of lean angles do you guys get on these bikes in the corners? Anywhere near that? Uh, I think we're, we're creeping up on 60 for sure on, on the right side of the bike for us, you know, these are not symmetrical 
machines. So, um, so the, each side has, you know, poses different challenges as far as the lean angle that's available. Um, so this is actually one of the tracks we put a lot of emphasis on that because there's so many left-handers and we, we struggle on the left side for lean angle. So, but I think on the right side, we're 58, 59 getting there. So it's pretty wild. Okay, how about you Harley guys? Do you know how, what kind of lean angle you're getting on the, on the Challenger? Or I'm sorry, the Indian Challenger guys, sorry. Sorry, I got too many HDs in front of me here. Tyler or, or yeah, so Troy? Just for us, I mean, the progression of uh, lean angles has been, uh, it's, it, it just evolves every year. Uh, I was able to drag my elbow this year at Miami Homestead for the first time, so we are just keep getting more and more lean angle. Um, I think it's impressive, and uh, yeah, we just keep getting more and more. Yeah, and Kyle, you have gotten your elbow down before, I think, uh, on what, the right-hand side, maybe, or left? You yeah, know? It actually was the left side, but I was yeah. reaching for it, for sure. Okay. <laughs> it was a tall curb. <laughs> <laughs> Should be right. easy, then. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap this up, but I got one final thing, rapid-fire answer. You win on Saturday. MotoGP racer gets to hand you your winning trophy. Rispoli, who do you want? Go. Marquez. Kyle. Miller. Aiden. <laughs> Tyler. Valentino. Huh? Valentino. He's not here. He's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's here. <laughs> Who wants it? Who wants it? We know who you we know who you want. Wait, we can fly out Aussie Mick for it. Wayne. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, I'm old school. I'll get I'll get an old old legend. Hope you guys start quicker than that. All right. Thanks everyone for coming. We appreciate it. Good luck, all five of you this weekend. We appreciate it. See ya.